A while back, I asked all of you about your habits when it comes to watching anime films, and the response was mostly that while a lot of you had seen a decent amount of the Ghibli movies, you wouldn't really go out of your way to watch an anime film unless it was recommended to you. So here are a few random, kind of wild recommendations for me, and don't worry, it's not just me who thinks they're good, all of these movies have seen critical acclaim in some form. They might be a little bit different though, so try to keep an open mind and make sure you listen to the descriptions to see if there's something that you might be interested in. But before that, if you happen to have one, let me know what your favorite anime movie is in the comments so we can discuss. Now let's get into the first recommendation. Tech on Concrete is an award-winning, visual masterpiece of a film that takes place in the vibrant, crime-ridden metropolis of Treasure Town. The story follows the adventures of a pair of orphaned brothers, Kuro and Shiro, as they navigate the unforgiving streets with a healthy mix of childlike innocence and street smarts. Together, the two of them are known as the Cats, a, cat. a duo He's of wild them. delinquents He's who live cat. life without fear and claim Treasure Town as their territory. The Cats are strays and orphans. Delinquents who rule Treasure Town. When a corporation backed by a gang of Yakuza shows up with the intention of making big changes to their city, they step up to try and protect it and each other. Tech on Concrete blurs the lines between fantasy and reality. It's imaginative in a way that feels like it comes from the mind of a child. Be happy. And I mean this in the best way possible. It has an expressionistic art style that is a blend of both hand-drawn and digital work. There also isn't too big a concern with depicting reality exactly the way we see it. It's more about capturing the emotional experience, how we feel as we navigate the world. The characters have elongated limbs that help exaggerate their movements and body language. This allows for them to be far more expressive than normal. Their designs also tell you everything you need to know about what purpose they serve in the story. Those who have wisdom to offer have faces that are covered with wrinkles. The Yakuza and other criminals are solid and have the look of someone who's lived a hard life. But there's a difference between them and the other villains of the movie who are greedy businessmen, for example. These guys are often clean cut and wear devilish grins seen only on people you should be wary of trusting. The way that certain characters maneuver through this world is also indicative of this style. Kuro and Shiro begin the film in a chase where they jump over cars, run through traffic, and leap over buildings. They're free in the way they move around. It's almost like they can fly, at times, through this ginormous city they call home. The themes of Tech on Concrete are mostly presented in the form of dichotomies, which the city of Treasure Town is used to express. On one side, this colorful landscape that is rich with detail, is sprawling with life, and is full of hope and opportunity. On the other, there's a darkness present that shows just how grimy the city can be. It's plagued by crime and full of dilapidated buildings. Kuro and Shiro, whose names translate to black and white respectively, also represent these things. Kuro embodies the violent, pessimistic nature of the underworld, while Shiro still holds on to the innocence of his childhood. He's hopeful for a better future and brings light to the very grim circumstances that they're put in. These two are yin and yang. They both need each other to remain balanced. When separated, they become lost or act on their worst impulses. Seeing them navigate their separation is one of the more compelling aspects of the movie. Tech on Concrete is a highly emotional film with insanely fluid animation and a beautiful, unique visual style. The story, while predictable at times, remains an engaging tale of the hope and comfort two brothers bring each other in the face of change and desperation. Don't worry, White. Nobody will ever break us apart. The next movie is brought to you by Science Saru of so many bangers at this point. Devilman Crybaby, Star Wars Visions, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, and the upcoming Don the Don anime. Night a Short Walk On Girl follows the adventures of a young college student known only as the girl with black hair, as she encounters a quirky cast of characters during a seemingly endless night out in Kyoto. In the background, a classmate of hers tries to devise a plot for the two of them to run into each other by coincidence, so he can confess his long-held feelings. The film starts during a wedding reception. The majority of the guests in attendance just so happen to be kind of squares. No one seems to be having any real fun. The people at the same table as the girl with the black hair are ordering boring drinks like oolong tea and cider, while she just wants to get wasted and have a good time. She doesn't want to put herself in a situation to be judged for having the type of night she wants to have while the people around her are more tame. So when the reception leaves to go to an after party, she dips off by herself to go party the way she wants to. 
Her breaking free of the expectations of others leads her on a whimsical journey where she makes new friends and does things like party with retirees, enter a drinking contest with an old crime boss, and so much more. All of this happens in only the first 20 minutes of the movie, and the rest is a wild, unpredictable adventure where it feels like anything can happen. Night of Short is a gem that rewards the audience with a unique viewing experience. Its unconventional character and set designs help push it into the surreal, along with its near constant leaping between realism and fantasy. It has a vibrant color palette full of a lot of saturated colors that command your attention and help lighten the tone of the film which takes place almost exclusively at night. The story of Night of Short highlights the importance of human connection. Literally every character has strings that link them to someone else. It really is a small world. You'll meet one character, in a bar for example, who happens to be the father of the woman who gets married at the beginning of the movie. The man she married is the son of this old guy that we meet in another bar. She also rejects this guy who just so happens to be- There are so many connections like this in the film, and it's just a lot of fun seeing them all be explained through the dialogue and through their interactions. It's been a while since I've watched a movie that has as much charm as this. It's an intoxicating celebration of the unpredictable nature of life and the importance of community that also emphasizes the excitement and freedom that comes with living in the moment. Science Saru really has a knack for creating these wondrous, dreamlike worlds that are so easy to be lost in. If anyone was going to pull off making a surrealist rom-com about living freely and getting absolutely trashed with your friends then going on random adventures, it was them. Our third film comes from the same studio behind Tech on Kencrete. Mind Game tracks the psychedelic odyssey of an unemployed, aspiring mangaka named Nishi. What starts off as a seemingly harmless reunion between he and his crush ultimately leads to him having a high-speed chase with the Yakuza and encounters with a big, big whale, an old sage, and god. Being completely transparent, I feel like Mind Game is also another acquired taste, and it hasn't exactly aged the best. Just to give you an example of what I mean, here's a scene of the protagonist disarming a Yakuza with his ass cheeks. <laughs> I think stuff like this is hilarious, but I get it might not be for everybody. While this is basically the tone of the film, it does also have a much more mature, existentialist message about a chronic loser with a life full of regrets and his friends reclaiming their freedom in a chaotic world. It's also just a fun movie. Forces outside of their control cause them to be on the bad side of the Yakuza, and while a confrontation between them originally ends in tragedy, Nishi seizes an opportunity for a second chance. I can't really say too much more about it other than this without spoiling it. Mind Game sports an unorthodox approach to storytelling that begins as a romance drama and quickly turns into a mind-bending adventure with visuals that match its hectic world. The art style consists of a blend of traditional hand-drawn art, cell shading, CGI, and even live-action footage. I'm not going to lie to you, at first, just because of how standard a lot of modern anime are now in terms of their art style, you might not be super into all of the experimentation, but it really doesn't take long for you to begin appreciating all of the stylistic choices that may seem a little bizarre initially. <laughs> But anyway, that's everything for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, if you're interested, you can get my socials in the description. Thank you for watching. Peace.